common question asked on the pattern folding perceptual ability portion of the DAT are the cube questions. Basically, you're given a folded out cube like these, and you're asked to tell them what the 3D figure will look like. And these were really hard for me at first, but it's actually, there's a few tricks that you can include that makes it a lot easier, and they're quick, and you can use them to eliminate answer choices quite quickly. And I definitely use these. I believe that my DAT had two cube questions, so definitely recommend getting comfortable with them. So the very first thing I do when I see a figure like this for a perceptual ability um, portion is I try to see which two sides of the cube will not touch. So looking here for one, one second, one and three will not touch. They're just going to be opposite sides of the cube. I also know that 2 and 4 will not touch, and 6 and 5 will not touch. Um, the reason for that being is like when you have a cube, like this, let's say this would be number 1, and number 3 would be that back side right there, and they will never touch, and 6 and 5 will never touch. So then let's take a look at this one, and we're going to do the same thing. We know that five and six won't touch, one and three will not touch, and two and four will not touch. So let me do an example problem and show you how you can use knowing this knowledge to eliminate answer choices. So here is an example from a practice test, and we are given our folded up version. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna say, okay, I know that one and six will not touch. So I go to my answer choices right here and I take a look and see where 1 and 6 are touching those sides. So I see that 1 is right here and 6 is right here. But I know that like on an example here, they shouldn't touch 1 and 6. And then there's 1 and 6 right there. So we can cross out answer choice A. Then I'll go down the line and see if there's anyone else. 1 and 6, I see a 1 here, but I don't know where the 6 is. I cannot eliminate B. In C, I have a 1, but I don't see the 6, so that could potentially be the correct answer. And in D, I have 1 and 6 touching. But once again, they should never be able to touch. They are on opposite sides no matter how I turn the cube around, so I can eliminate answer choice D. And just like that, within a few seconds, I was able to eliminate 50% of the answer choices. So that's awesome. So now we're going to go to the next thing. Usually I just go through and I go, okay, 4 and 5 will not touch because of course they're on opposite ends again. I had I don't have a four here. I do have a five that doesn't help me. I've got five here. I don't know where four is. That doesn't really help me. And then I'll quickly do it for this. Um, I know that three and two will not touch because two could be spun around right here and go right there. So I know that they're opposites and um, they will not touch. So I quickly check and I go three. I don't see a two, three and I don't see a two. Still, with that quick technique that took like, I don't know, three seconds, I was able to eliminate two answer choices. So now I'm gonna take a look at B and C a little bit more closely. And I'm gonna take a look at it and I'm gonna say, okay, which one should I look at? If I start with B, I've got five right here, but one is on the opposite side. So I'm gonna have to like, think about flipping this whole figure, like uh, give it a 180 turn. And that can be hard to visualize, it takes a little longer, so I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at C before I do all that vis visualization stuff. So in C, 1 is our front face. Here is 1. And we know that on the right side of 1, we have 5, and that's exactly what we have here. That's good. And above it, we're going to have this. So that's going to flip there. And above it, we should have, let me take, show you guys what we should have. So once we flip that, that's a square. This will go right there. That's our dot. And this would go right there. And we see that we should have two above the one. Straight above it should be two from this flipping. But we see a three. The three is actually below it, not above it. And um, we know that... Uh, that is not correct. So once again, I had one right there, I have one right there. To the right of it, I have five. I have five. Above it, 
I should have two, not three. Three is below it. I can eliminate answer choice C. And just like that, I know the correct answer is B without even having to flip anything and make this more complicated. So now I'm gonna just take the time to prove to you why B is correct. But once again, normally you would not do this. You would just move on. It's a time test. So here we go. Here is our figure. And in our head, we have to be able to rotate it. And we would do a 180 rotate on it. So here we are. We have flipped it in our minds 180 degrees. And we know that our front square is five. Here is five and five. To the right, we have one, we have one. And below it, we don't know what it is. But we, we can flip this one time here and it one more time here. And we know we should have two below it. Therefore, B is the correct answer.